I've got to stretch mine a little bit. <laughs> you guys get our age, you'll want to stand up and stretch. You can be seated. Well, like it's been said, you look good. My sister used to play softball. And there was this girl on the team. Every inning, she'd come in out of the field. She'd get in the dugout. She'd get her hair brushed. Get long hair, and she'd comb her hair. Every inning. And finally said, how come you do that? She said, well, you look good. You feel good. You feel good. You play good. I say you look good. I'll praise God. Amen. Amen. I got two words this morning to preach. Like Jay said, I just about pulled the trigger on you guys a little bit ago, but I didn't. But I said it's it's all in God's timing. And when it's ready, whenever you I have learned in my my journey that whenever I feel impressed to God to do something or say something. I'm going to do my best to do it. And if I would have really felt the stronger pumpkin, I would have, I would have, I would have had to step up because, that is, like I said, it's on God's timetable. But I sense in my heart this morning that the Lord wants to speak to some hearts, and we've got to open ourselves. You know, and everybody's mentioned this is homecoming day. This is the place that I give my heart and life to Jesus right here. It'll be forever etched in my mind. I was sitting on the back row. I was I wasn't bad, but I was lost. And you know, there's a lot of good people going to end up in hell because they did not uh, accept the Lord as their Savior. A lot of good people, good dads, good moms, good grandpas and grandmas is going to hear the Lord say, "Depart from me. I don't know who you are," simply because they refuse to accept Jesus Christ. This there's not a halfway place. Listen, when we when, when the nut leaves, you better be ready. There's not a halfway place here to eternity to decide, hey, I gotta get right. If you leave here safe, you'll stand before him, say And if you leave here all that you'll stand before him all. But I thank the Lord that I'm here. If I could say this, it was at this church. I wasn't more than a toe-headed kid. I, as far as I'm concerned, I had the best parents a kid could ever ask for. But my, my dad was not a Christian back then. He wasn't bad, but he wasn't saved. But it was at this church. And while I'm, I'm going to share his testimony with you if I can. Because the Lord began to deal with that. And the Lord knows exactly where you're at. And he knows where you're standing at with him. If you're right, whether you're wrong, whether you're you know, trying to straddle the fence. I, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you, there's no fence to straddle. And if you think for a second that you're half in and half out, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, honey, you're all out. But the Lord began to deal with Dad. And Dad put that. And I have, I've seen Bob Hopkins and probably Jack Kirby, different people go back and shake his hand. And he simply would just give him one nod that he was not ready. And but the Lord began to deal with that. And I tell you, the Lord can get He can get in your suitcase and mess it up. Because the Lord loves you more today than He ever did. Can you prove that? Absolutely. The Bible says that His mercies are renewed every morning. He loves you more today than He ever has. I can't explain it. That's just what the Word says. But the Lord, I you know it. He, he began to deal with dad and, and dad put out a police and I do not recommend it. But the Lord was gracious and mercy, merciful and here was the prayer. He said, Lord, if this is you speaking to me, you let the preacher preach out of Isaiah 35 tonight. That was dad's request to the Lord. They went back to church that night and you know, going to church don't make you saved either. He, the preacher, got up to preach. He said, you got your Bibles, open them up, Isaiah chapter 35. Nobody had to get back to the front. Listen, he 
when the preacher preached and gave the altar call, here he come and dad knelt down right in this area and I seen a change. I'm talking about radically changed. I thank God for it. And you might say, well, I had an encounter with the Lord a long time ago, but I'm still doing what I used to do. I'm here to tell you, if you've had an encounter, it'll change. And if there's not been a change, then you have not met him. Amen. He'll change you from the inside out. You won't talk the way you used to talk. You won't walk. You won't go to places you used to go. He'll change you. Amen. I'm working on it. He'll change you. I said, he will, it will give him a heart. Amen. But I, you know, this has been scheduled for a while. And I just, I just want to preach what I feel the Lord lays on my heart. That's it. Want to listen to him? And if I would preach on two words this morning, it's being fully committed. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes people get in a pickle because they're not committed to do what they need to do. Sometimes, now I'm just... I tell my boys when they was learning to drive, it might be the middle of July. And I tell them, I said, drive this hill right here like there's snow on it. You might think, well, that's crazy. No, they learned how to, dad was trying to instill in them how to drive on it. A lot of people get in trouble on snowy roads, number one. I'll just be honest, number one, if it snows, they shouldn't be driving to start with, and I don't mean that bad. There's, can I say it? They're scared. <laughs> you know, and if there's snowy roads scare you, stay off of them. But when it comes to the hill, then once you start, you got to be committed. Yes. And sometimes in this Christian walk, you know, we got to we give our heart and life to Christ. But it seems like, you know, some people will, will come to the altar, but you just can kind of tell something was lacking. Now, I'm just being honest. Yeah. Sometimes you can see people come to the altar and you know they got what they needed. Yes. Yeah. And I tell you, on this road called life, there's going to be some hills that you're going to have to climb. And if we're not too fully for, uh, committed to follow the Lord, listen, when the trials come, persecution comes, troubles come, then we're going to get out of the gas. And before long, we're not moving anywhere. I'm gonna tell you this. Listen, you know I say I don't want to. I don't want the uh, the rough roads. I don't want the hills. But the Bible says the godly shall suffer persecution. If you're a child of God, there's going to be hills. There's going to be valleys. There's going to be spots in your life. And if you're not fully committed to follow God, then you're gonna quit. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter something, 10, I think. Mark 10. Yeah, Mark 10. Lord, you helped me this morning. You know what's up on my heart? God, I need you. Need the anointing and need the unction. Need the liberty to preach. Pray God that it's, Lord, that we did not miss your timing. God, like Jay said, it's been plowed up good. It's been disc up good. Lord, it's been drug good and it's ready. And I pray, God, that you'll speak to every heart that's in the house. God, you know where people stand in your sight. God, I realize, Lord, that tomorrow's not promised. God, but we are promised this. It is appointed unto man wants to die. After this will come the judgment. And I pray, God, for your help. I pray, God, that you'll open our hearts. God, that you'd open our ears and our understanding. God, that we'd hear from you today. God, I pray that you walk in and out of every pew. God, that you'll touch every heart, Lord, this year. God, that you'll minister to people. God, help us, Lord God, that we realize that, God, that we've got to be fully committed to follow you. I pray, God, you help me. God, just minister to people. God, I pray that you'll draw. I pray for conviction, God, to be in the house. God, if there's any here that's lost, God, that's straddled on the fence, that's not sure that they're ready to meet you. God, I pray for conviction to come upon the heart. 
because I realize, Lord, as I see what's going on, God, that we're running out of time, God, and we do, we're not promised tomorrow. But God, should that trumpet sound, God, we want to have an ear to us. And I pray, God, that you might minister to us, Lord. Just do a work, Lord, that only you can do. And we'll give you praise and everybody said. Mark the 10th chapter. 17. And when he was going forth into the way, there come one running, kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why cost me thou good? There is none good but one, that is God. But thou knowest that commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasures in heaven and come, take up the cross and, and follow me. In other words, he said, one thing you're lacking. You're not fully committed. And it seems like we, you know, we, we don't have a problem with being fully committed to do the things that we really want to do. Now, I'll just be honest with, with you and you guys know me. Come mid-April, I'll deprive myself of sleep. Yeah. Because I'm going to get up way before the rooster does, and I'm going to be out way out of ridge somewhere. Listen, I'm talking even before season comes in, that I might hear me some of those thunder chickens, and them old goblin turkeys, and David, and listen to me. I'm committed to chase those rascals. Up. And I tell you, people, if you want to make it to heaven, you have got to be fully committed. That no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, no matter what you feel, no matter what's going on in your life, listen, we have got to be fully committed or we're going to be stuck by the side of the way and say, God, where art thou? Amen. We don't have a problem committing, just doing something we will really want to do. But there was a rich man and Lazarus. That rich man, he had everything that he wanted. Finest of foods, drinks, he had it. That rich, that poor man didn't have not one earthly thing. But both of them died, Tim. Yes, they did. That rich man, you might have everything at your disposal, everything at your fingertips, but he was not fully committed to serve the Lord. Listen to me, I don't even know if the man was saved. But listen, the bottom line is this, both of them died. And the whole story done a 180. Then the beggar become the rich man, and the rich man become the beggar. And he said, let's and he can see what he missed. And I believe tonight, this morning, if you're here and you don't accept Jesus Christ, one of these days when this whole thing wraps up and we are in our eternal place, if you don't make it, I believe you can look and see what you missed. And hope and pray, God, give me one more chance. But if they couldn't do it. And that rich man said, let this when the beggar died, he was carried by the angels. Michael, your daddy was a great man. He was blessed here the other day. I believe with all of my heart. I believe the angels come down and carried him out of here. But I'm here to tell you. Listen, one of these days, rest assured, we're going to stand Amen. before God. The Bible says is it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. And we like to say unprepared, but unprepared is not that. It's a fearful thing. And the only thing God's going to look at is if he sees the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your heart. If it's not there, you're not going to make it. You might say you can't tell people they're going to hell. You hear what I'm telling you? 
I didn't write the book, but I'm just going to preach what it says. If your name's not written in the Lamb's book of life, you're not going to make it. Judgment's already been passed. Listen to me. And if we stand before him without the blood, without being fully committed, listen, we're going to hear him say, depart from me. Fully committed. Let me finish reading. This boy, last one thing, when Jesus told him what to do, he said, I've kept him from my youth up. He said, but you're lacking one thing. I want, I, listen, I want to declare today, I want God to do inventory on me. Sometimes we've got to watch. Sin will disguise itself. And we think that the Bible says this, Ron, in two places. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. There's Satan's got a counterfeit, and there's people out there, I believe, believe in it with all their heart. Listen, that they're walking the right road, that they're walking the same road, but if sin's in there, listen, and it's never been dealt with, then you're walking a road that leads straight to hell itself. Paul said this, woe well, is me if I preach not the gospel. I've got to, I, I am commissioned of God. I have got to preach what the word of God said. And if the blood of Jesus Christ had not been, and if you're not fully committed, I am, I just would instill a, in, in you to get fully committed. He said, I've kept them all from my youth up. He said, yeah, but you're lacking one thing. He said, just sell out. I'm not telling you got to go sell your truck and your horse and your boat and go on mower. I'm not saying that. And, you know, I'm telling you, sell out in here. Yeah. You got to sell out everything that's in here. A world that's holding on to God with one hand and the world with the other is a people that's defeated. They're discouraged. They're distraught. They don't know which way to turn. But I come to you, just sell out to him and say, God, how, how do I do that, preacher? God, here's my life. I've made a mess out of it. Would you come into my heart? God, I sell everything. I give you everything, every thought. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I give you my life. God, just take me and use me. And God, listen, you must say, preacher, you have no idea where I've been and what I've done. But you listen to me. One drop of the blood of Jesus Christ. Take a good drop and sinner and make me a child. I can't explain that. I know if we're fully committed to serve him. Say, God, I need you in my heart. The law didn't work because the people couldn't live it. If the law would have worked, then Christ died in vain. We're not under the law. And I thank God for that. But we couldn't live it. But I think, listen, the law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And he left the portals of glory and came down here. Listen, and gave his life that we might have eternal life. Let me just put it this way. This world's nasty anymore. If you die lost, this is the closest thing to heaven that you're going to see. You die saved, this is the closest thing to hell as you're going to see. I'm glad to know I have fully committed my heart, my life. God just takes me and use me. I put you in me at your disposal. Use me anyway. That's what. Listen to me, church. I sell out to God. Amen. All your bitterness. All your hate, all your jealousy, our heart is deceitful above all things. God, clean, clean my house. Judgment must begin in the house of God. 
And I sense such an urgency in my spirit that we have got to be fully committed. Now, here you might say, preacher, help me out, I'm going to. Just don't try to tiptoe your way in. You might say, well, at once, here's where people get in trouble. I've got to quit this, and I've got to quit that, and I've got to quit. You come just the way that you are. In other words, don't tiptoe in. Just go ahead and jump with all your garbage, with all your sin, with all your guilt, and say, God, I commit everything. Here's my life, and he can change us. Amen. We can. He will not push us in. We've got to say, hey, I don't understand it. Well, there's a lot of that I still don't understand. But this one thing that I know, I was lost and now I'm found. I was on my way to hell. But God does a U-turn in my life and I say glory to God. I got to hurry. Don't want to burn the potatoes today. He said, sell what you have. Give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come take up the cross and follow me. I've got it all figured out. <laughs> I don't know what Brother Raymond saw. Though, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what my dad saw. I don't know what your dad saw. But I know there was a man of God that was fully committed. Absolutely. Amen. There's a lot of things in this world that the enemy brings against us to try to keep us from our destination. I'm not going to tell you, you get saved, your life's going to be easy. I'm not telling you that one bit. But I'll tell you, he said, I, I want you to understand if there was, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm going to give him just a little bit. But if there was ever a person that committed himself to you and to me, it was him. I'm going to go ahead and preach that now. Can I just go ahead and preach that now? Listen to me. When Jesus came born as a babe wrapped in swallowing clothes, that was not the beginning of Jesus. He wasn't saying, what are you saying? He was here from the foundations of the world. He said, let us make man after our image. And I thank God. Yeah. Listen to me. God formed us out of the dust of the ground. And man laid there just as a hill of us. But God does something. He breathed a breath of life into his nostrils. Amen. And man become a living soul. Yeah. And we are the apple of his eye. Amen. Listen to me. And God seen it. And Adam and Eve communed with God. Yeah. Started off good. Sometimes we start off pretty good. Sometimes we just kind of lose our commitment. Here comes sin. Here come the serpent. He wasn't crawling on the ground. He he was upright. Here he come. And he began to talk to you. Listen to what I'm telling you. The only thing you need to say to the enemy is get under my feet. I commend myself to the Lord Jesus. I won't put up with your garbage. Not in my not in my but they got to be fully committed. Here, it was the apple. It was the, God enjoyed just coming down in communion with Adam and Eve. But sin separates. Sin will bust up your commitment. Might be frowned on, but I'm going to preach it for a minute. I believe once you get committed, 
You need to stay committed. Amen. When I give my heart and life, listen to the Lord Jesus. There's been a lot of crossroads in my life. And sometimes God would help us. I, I took the wrong road. Yeah. Yeah. And every time I realize, oh God, I'm on the wrong road. God, would you help me? He had reached down in mercy and grace and picked me up and shut me back where I belong. I feel like preaching for a minute. Amen. Once I give my heart to him, right here, right there, I had to recommit myself to him. That in the last days some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. If you stay committed to him, it's a guarantee he'll stay committed to you. Amen. It's not him I'm worried about. It's me I'm worried about. Sometimes God had to go back and say, God, one more time. God, I repent. I mess up. In your or whatever. I mess up. Forgive me. He said, I'll do it again. That's right. But here it comes. He seen the sin was so great. He told Noah, he said, build me an ark. Noah had to be committed like none other. Yes, he did. This what the 12 foot John boat with a bunch of glass bottom. This was a football field and a half long, three stories. He didn't have the nail guns. Listen to me, air compressors. He had an old wooden peg. Listen to an old mallet. But he began to build. And it took him a lot of years to get this thing built. But he was committed. He might say, I can't do what I feel he called me to do. You listen to me. Commit yourself to do him. And you can do anything the Lord tells you to do. Amen. Reason people's are quitting doing the reason preachers. Quit preaching. Reason singers quit singing. You might say, well, I'm not neither one of them. The we reason prayer warriors quit praying. I've seen it here. Here. Right in this building. I've seen it at Pine Twist. Ronnie, when people prayed, they, they would preach or preach and give an altar call and they would be lying back, clear to the chairs and back the aisle as far close as they could get. I've seen it. Yep, me too. But people quit praying. Why? Because they're not fully committed. Amen. Yeah, brother, I don't like it. Sometimes prayer is tough. <laughs> it's standing in the gap. Yeah. He said, I stopped for a man among them. I, I was standing in the gap and make up the hands. But I fell God. God be merciful to us. People, hey, you know why you're here. You know why you're saved. Some grandpa or grandma or old saint of God was in this church or in another church that was fully committed to see that you got saved. And they had a burden. And they had a, a desire. And they prayed. I heard my dad. And I think it was Uncle Eddie Robinson. He said he would hear him pray. They called on him in church to pray. He said he, he prayed for my neighbors and for my neighbors' children. Where's the wind, church? Where's the wind? We, I believe we are right in the balance. God, we need your help. Yeah. We need your mercy. Amen. Somewhere along the line, we're not committed to pray. They're having a prayer meeting. That's what Wednesday night used to be called. Yes. Prayer meeting. If people pray, Ramona, 
I seen it. It's having a prayer meeting. That's what it was, a prayer meeting. They just got going. The pastor fell and knocked on the shoulder. Then I got to go. Okay. I just got to do some stuff. But I got to go. Okay. And I prayed everything I know to pray. I said, okay. I'll look at you later. And look, it's been seven minutes. Seven minutes. Jay, somewhere we're not committed. I'll tell you why. Listen to me, church. It's disguised itself up. But social media has come an epidemic. And people are losing their commitment to God because they're getting hooked on stuff they ought not be on. Amen. You don't think preaching ain't going yet. Fame, I'm not in it to be famous. But I come to tell you, we have got to be fully committed. Yes, oh, no, he said. Fill me in our. He was, imagine. Ridicule we went through. The whole world. Watching him. Hey, you hear what's going on down there? Where was that? That guy building the boat. He said, heard that. Well, let's go look at it. Went down there and they checked it out. I believe there was a ramp up that ark and people walked right up. I believe the closer it got, it's been a couple years since we've been down there. Go down, see how much he's getting. And it got to the point, I believe he was on the third floor. They got up there and they looked at it. Preacher, you're not. Now listen to me. The world might say that you're not. They might say that you don't. They're flipped off your end. But I'm here to tell you, you can call me anything that you want. But I'm fully committed to preach the word of God and to tell people to get committed. Amen. I believe they walked up on there and turned and walked right back off. Because they didn't have it. Thought he was crazy. Why would we come here on a Sunday morning and sweat, yell, sing, testify? Because I believe there's a people that is committed. Yeah, absolutely. But Noah finished building it. There came a time when he went, this is the one we're looking for, boys. And he drove in the last peg. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, there he is. <laughs> he gathered the animals and the invitation went out. He said, guys, get fully committed. And all you got to do is walk on the arm. And there was only eight people. Yeah, right. <laughs> the entire world. Absolutely. said, I ain't doing it. I'm here to tell you there's coming a time. That's a fact. And you'll be given, you hope you have one more chance. Right. Amen. Right. To give your heart and your life to Christ. Yep. Yes. I'm here to tell you. Be fully committed today. Maybe a little bit about Peter. He was handpicked by Jesus. Handpicked. And Peter went and he walked with him. Seen him raise the dead. Seen him wake the blindness out of eyes. Seen him heal the cripple. But come right down to it. And I believe if Peter was here today, I believe he, even after seeing all that, he said, There came a time in my life when I wasn't fully committed. Right. And I'm here to tell you if we can't commit ourselves when times are good, you might say, you call them time to good now, preacher. I'm telling you, they better know what they're going to be. Yes, that's a, you're that's right, right on, buddy. That's a fact. I ain't telling you they're good, but I'm there better than what what's coming down the road. That's right. I believe Peter said, hey, there was a time in my life when I wasn't fully committed. Yet I've seen him do all these miraculous things, but I just didn't. What, what happened, Peter? I believe his exact word would be, I started following the far off. That's what the word says. Yep. And when it came right down to it, Peter said, we'll just go. I'm going to die with you. Talks cheap, people. That's what it came down to. And he said, no. Nah. 
you, you, you're one of him. He went, oh, no, no. And the third time with an oath, denying that he ever knew him. And immediately the rooster crew. I'm here to tell you, you got to commit to him. If you want him in the bad times, you've got to be committed to him in the good times. That's right. That's right. That's right. Not just, listen, we've got to, and when, we, when I'm saying committed, we have got to give him everything that we've got. You can't hold on to a little bit of the world. Oh, and this boy walked away sorrowful because he had great possession. In verse 29. Let me read the last part of 21. To come, take up your cross, and follow me. That's how you commit it. Amen. When you lay her down. You know, it's not a starting point over here for some of you. And over here, we all start at the same place. Right. We all get committed at the same place. And it's a place called Calvary. Right. But as Noah built dark, and what a commitment that was. Because it had never ever rained. God told me, build an ark. Jesus came down here. The greatest commitment. You know, he could look past our whole outer shell. He could see the stars and the blemishes and the places in our life where we just made a teetotal mess out of things. But he, he was fully committed. When he, Isaiah had prophesied 700 years before Christ that there was a massacre that was coming, that his vision was so marred. He was literally beaten beyond recognition in the pictures you see of Jesus on the cross with blood out the forehead and out the hands and out the feet. That's not the picture that really was. He was beaten literally beyond recognition with a cat of nine tails and the bone fragments were buried deep into his flesh and the press ripped clear off of his bone. And when Pilate said, Behold the man, listen, right there was nothing more than a neck mangled up piece of human flesh. Listen to me, that looked like, if I can say it, nothing more than shredded hamburger. I'm talking about being fully committed. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, listen, he said, Father, if it's possible to do this some other way, let's do it. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. In other words, he said, I'm committed. I am totally committed. If this is what it was going to take. And they put him up on the cross. And they took those old wooden, the metal spikes and, and drove them right through his feet and his hand and took that crown of thorns and planted it up on his head. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And he said this, it's finished. And he bowed his head and he died. And he bowed his head and he died. He was committed. And you know what happened when he died? He went and ministered to the spirits that was in prison. He went to hell for us. I'm talking about the sinless son of God. Went to hell. Listen to me. And he led captivity captive. But death couldn't hold him. Grave couldn't hold him. Listen to me. Hell could not hold him. He said, I'm fully committed to do the will of my father. And he said, I am he that was dead. And I'm alive. And I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Fully committed for us. We try to straddle the fence. Read two verses. I'll wrap it up soon. 29. <coughs> Jesus answered and said, Barely. I mean, truly. I say unto you, There is no man that has left house or brethren or sisters or fathers or mothers or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. And the devil says, look what you're giving up. No, 
It's look like what I'm gaining. Amen. If I commit myself, if I can commit my life, fully commit, not one foot in and one foot out, not straddling the fence, decide no matter what, I'm going to follow him. But shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mother and children and land with persecution in the world to come, eternal life. You fully commit to follow him. I'm not telling you it's easy. Matter of fact, I'll just tell you, it's going to be rough. You'll be in the minority probably, but I'm here to tell you the reward that's a coming far exceeds anything that you can think or ask. I think it's in Genesis. I kind of hit on it a little bit earlier. That God shot for a man. God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham said, what if I find 50 righteous? He said, I'll spare the city. And it went all the way down to 10. And he couldn't find 10 people. But Abraham, when he was... They had a son. And when God's promise came to Abraham, real quick, it didn't happen in nine months. But God had told him, he said, look at the stars, look at the sand. I'm going to bless you. But that Sarah didn't conceive. You got to know the story. They kind of got the cart ahead of the horse. Went in, Hagar. But that was not the son of promise. Ishmael was born. That wasn't it. But 25 years after the promise, all right, 25 years after the promise, Isaac was born. And God told him one day, he said, Abraham, offer your son. Talking about being fully persuaded. He said, he didn't say, I, I, I can't do that. He said, in the morning, they saddled up him and two servants and they went. And he told the servants, he said, now listen to me. He said, you stay yonder and worship. You stay right here. Me and the son's going yonder and worship and return again unto you. That's right. And as they left the servants and they started, Isaac said, Dad, we're, we got everything, but we don't have the sacrifice. And he said, Son, God will provide himself a sacrifice. I'm talking about fully persuaded. I'm telling you, if you fully commit yourself to follow him, listen, when things look rough, when you don't know how things are going to turn out, if you fully commit to follow him, he's got your back. Now, listen to me. I, I feel I need to say this right now. So listen to me. I feel the unction to speak this into somebody's life. If you feel, if you fully commit to follow him and there is a situation that rises up in your life and you don't know which way to turn and that will happen. Yep. God says, if you fully commit, to follow me, I will have your back. Amen. Amen. I didn't tell you that for a hand clap. I told you that because that's what I felt. Rise up and he said, I'll, if you commit yourself to me, I'll have your back. Amen. That's right. He said, Dad, where's the sacrifice? He said, God will provide. They went up to there. And built built the altar. And Isaac's a helping him. And then Abraham bound up Isaac and laid him on there. And drew back his knife and was ready to slay his own son. And he said, hey, I got your back. You don't have to. But if we fully commit to follow the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking halfway. Here's another thing. I felt the Lord speak to my heart. We're wanting the river experience while we wade in the creek. Yeah. Now, some of you didn't catch. I'm, I'm, I'm going to quit here in a minute. But some of you want the river experience while wading in the creek. That's the truth. Ain't going to happen. We want the full time benefits while we serve God. Part time. Mm -hmm. it's the truth. It's the truth. Here comes, listen, he says, if you fully commit to follow me, I got your back. And they heard a rustle in the bushes and they looked and there was a ram there with his horns stuck. 
and God had provided. I come to tell you today, I come to tell you, you've got to be fully committed. You can't strap one foot in and one foot out. You're lost. I don't know for sure that I'm saved. You're lost. Maybe it's been a long time and maybe you started out good and something just happened. Listen, it's time to recommit ourselves to him. If you have never, can I get you? I'm going to ask you, can you come to the piano for me? Just play something as easy as you can. I come to tell you, you got to get fully committed. We will probably never, ever meet like this again. And I feel I've done my best, Ron, to preach what I feel the Lord laid on my heart. You can't straddle. You got to make a decision. Because I'm going to tell you what happens. People are one in and one out. You're blocking. You may be blocking your family from committing, fully committing. You have to determine it down in here. Church, we got a responsibility to do. There's people that cannot get in the presence of God. And in Mark, the second chapter, there was a man that was crippled and he could not get to Jesus. And four men got fully committed and they picked up that man's cot and carried him back, Greg, to the very, to where Jesus was at. And when they got there, the crowd was so large, they couldn't get in, but they was fully committed. And they looked at it and said, let's take him up on the roof and lowered and took the roof apart and lowered that man right into where Jesus was at. And the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, he healed that man. I'm here to tell you, church, it's time we get fully committed. It's time we get back to praying. It's time we get back to worshiping. It's time we get people back in the presence of God and doing our part. God, there's people, there's family members dying, lost without God because the church is not fully committed. You might say, preacher, how am I going to do it? Number one, you're going to have to get committed in your heart and say, God, here my, here's my life. I messed up a few times. I need you to start from, I realize, Lord, we've done round to that final turn. We're on the home stretch. We're going down the home stretch. Get fully committed. You might say, preacher, it's way, way too late in my life. Let me tell you, there was a thief hanging on both sides of Jesus. And one of them turned his back. And the other said, Lord, I'd just like to be fully committed to follow you. What few minutes I got left. And the Lord said today, that will be with me in paradise. It's not too late. But you got to determine it in here. And church, it's going to start at an altar of prayer. It's going to start us seeking God with everything we got. And just worshiping him from our heart. Don't worship him from your head. Worship him from our heart. God, we just we just magnify you today. God, I thank you for your word. God, and help us all to be fully committed. God, it's a decision, God, that we've got to make by ourselves. And I pray, God, Lord, that you speak to every heart that's in here. God, and there's people, Lord, that might not be fully committed today. But God, that's what I felt in my heart. Fully committed. And I declare, Lord, that people make a commitment to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand, I'm going to open up these altars. Maybe you're not.